If we have a detection on these things and we do not have a response fast and a containment to try and take the one shot to eradicate them, it's over with. They, they will be in the water body, the state will be contaminated with them, and, and we then live with, with all the devastation that they could do. Everybody hands on preventing one of the biggest invasive species um, attacks to our natural waterways right now is very, very important. It's a danger constantly lurking in the Evergreen State, and it could force Washington waterways to pay a lasting ecological price. For this field report, TVW was on hand with a rare look as state and federal officials prepare to face off against aquatic invasive species. During the past three years, TVW has provided coverage of the threat that aquatic invasive species pose to the Evergreen State. Having reported on the dangers of invasive species for years, TVW headed to the Kettle Falls Marina in Lake Roosevelt National Park, where state, tribal, and federal officials put the skills they will need to fight invasive species to the test. This that we uh, are experiencing today is the very first interagency response to invasive mussels focused on the operations. So across the West and in Washington State, we've had numerous tabletop exercises where we play war games and discuss between agencies about how we would respond. Today, we actually put teams on the water, on the ground, and responded. And we implemented containment, a mock treatment, inspections, decontamination, really everything that's involved with an invasive mussel response happened here today. It was all hands on deck as representatives from multiple types of organizations worked to prepare for the ever lingering risk of an aquatic invasive invasion. This is huge. This is the first of its kind full scale exercise. Um, and this is an inter office agreement, not only between the feds, uh, state, tribes, and there's also international. We have uh, people from Canada coming down to see this. It's exciting, but it's necessary. Agencies and groups, watershed groups, everyone has to be talking to each other. This is a threat that uh, no one can own. We all have to work together in order to manage this threat. And doing an exercise like this uh, as a rapid response practical exercise uh, is a good way to demonstrate how everyone needs to be uh, working together on this issue. Among the reasons for the critical training is to provide a hands-on feel that can't be gained in a tabletop exercise. Each one of the individual parts from doing the boat inspections to doing decontamination to doing dive surveys, shore surveys, doing the, the containment boom, each individual part by itself is fairly simple, but when you put them all going simultaneously at once, it becomes exponentially harder. So being able to practice the capabilities uh, is invaluable. Uh, Again, law enforcement, I'll, I'll put it on this way. As a law enforcement officer, the first time that you go to arrest somebody and pull out your handcuffs, that's not the first time that you wanna actually have tried those handcuffs out. You, you have to train. Uh, and this was the first time we were able to, to actually do that. We've had, I've been through three different rapid response tabletop exercises where essentially you sit in a room and you come up with a scenario and you play the theoretical mind games. Well, we do this, we do this, we do this. But you never tested the capabilities. This is cutting edge because we are actually, as Washington did the first one, where we went out and it wasn't just theory. We put it to, to practical use this time. So we've, we've learned a lot of things, uh, things that we didn't anticipate, and that will allow us to go back to the drawing board and hone our skills and hopefully we'll be able to do another one, two, three, keep this in our repertoire. Um, hopefully we don't have to use it, but if we do, then, then we're prepared for it. The exercise contained multiple components to test the readiness of land and water teams as they prevent and or quarantine the invasive muscle threat. When they come into the checkpoints, they are mandatory in the state. They need to pull in. Um, they are greeted by one or two of our inspectors. They ask a few non-intrusive questions 
where where's the boat been in the last 30 days? Uh, does the boater clean drain and dry between uses? While the one inspector is asking those questions, the other one is doing a quick visual inspection of the boat. Uh, generally, the inspections are over between two and five minutes is, is all it takes. Uh, at some of the inspection stations, they also might uh, encounter puddles, our, our muscle sniffing dog, and that makes the inspections go much faster. She's actually trained. The handler walks the dog around the outside of the boat, no alert. We give the, give the boater the information on, on education on what to do, clean, drain, and dry, and we send them on their way. We try to make it as convenient as possible. We do not want to impede their, their travels across the state. We want to get them back out on the water and having fun. Highlighting the invasive threat to TVW is Cindy Sawchuck from the Alberta Provincial Government, who shared just how hard mussels have hit certain Canadian waterways. Invasive mussels are an incredible threat to healthy water body. They, um, they're filter feeders, so they're cycling through the good nutrients, um, they outcompete native species. They are uh, really detrimental. Um, when they start to reproduce really rapidly, as they do, and they don't have any, you know, uh, anything really that's native that's keeping them in check, uh, what they can do is they're reproducing rapidly, and as they die off, their shells are washing up on shores. That's causing. Um, a lot. I mean, I've seen shorelines in Canada, in Lake Winnipeg, where the, the dead mussel shells are up to my, like, mid-calf. Uh, so they're really, um, you know, they're sharp, they're causing a smell. The economic impact is something we're really worried about as well. In Alberta, in my province, we have 8,000 kilometers of pipes and canals that are moving water for irrigation purposes, and this is for um, feeding industry and agriculture, for recreations, for supplying wetlands, and should we see invasive mussels into those agricultural uh, systems, you know, the impacts there would be devastating alone. Boat and land inspections by our four-legged friends are also a critical component of preventing invasive species in Washington. This exercise in Kettle Falls brought in international canine support. Hilo uh, and I work together to inspect boats. We are situated, uh, our inspection stations are situated at every major entryway into the province of Alberta. So we have inspection stations uh, primarily along the south and the eastern border where the threat is greatest and we inspect boats coming into the province. Uh, in 2019, we actually in Alberta had 19 muscle fowl boats attempt to enter Alberta. And so we're really on prevention mode, working together. Um, our canines are also trained to detect uh, invasive mussels along shorelines. So as part of an early detection rapid response plan, um, our dogs can follow along a variety of different uh, shorelines uh, looking for adult mussels that may be growing. Last summer our canine team, uh, we have three canine teams in Alberta, we inspected 20 shores along the province of Alberta. Now, which species is These are quagga? Certainly the work done by the canines can't be overstated as both Puddles from the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife and Hilo from north of the border provided demonstrations about how to properly sniff out invasive mussels. Did you find it? Yes, you did! Oh, what is that? What a fine boy! Yay! Yay! Woo! Awesome! Wow, that was a needle in a haystack. <laughs> Seventh District Republican Representative Jacqueline Maycumber told TVW about the big picture potential impact of invasive mussels. Washington State is very dependent on our waterways um, and to have that from your power to your food to your uh, recreation, I mean we do everything through water in Washington State and to make this a number one priority and make sure that we protect that and that we protect it no matter what you believe and who you are, social economic or your political stance, we have to protect the Washington State's natural habitat it's very important. Where exactly on Ponderé were you? Finally, Captain Anderson indicated that the threat of invasive mussels fuels the work his team does to prevent their intrusion into Washington. 
We have got a crew that they know that this is this is a dire situation to keep these things out. Um, it, it's honestly, how do you say it? it it's almost it's it's their goal. They, it is their passion to try and protect this. I mean, look around you. The, these water sources. The, this is a sense of being for the Pacific Northwest, and our team has an incredible sense of pride because they they feel they are the front lines. Um, they want to stop this. Thanks again for watching and join us next time on Field Report.